so um, last class we looked at um, bending and lifting a load and what kind of loads that puts on the, the base of the spine where it transfers the load from the spine to the pelvis and to the ground. So, in some cases in some work areas this also has an impact not just when lifting loads, but also when uh, say in work areas. So, say a person is working in an assembly line for instance okay, and the um, work area is not designed properly which causes this person to perhaps bend more than required to do the job. So, we will look at a situation like that to see what kind of load. So, even if you are not carrying an external load, there can be significant loads on the spine which can cause long term damage if that persists. So, say for instance a person has to do something with these books you know maybe he has to put labels on them or you know do something and it is located in such a way that in one in the first case, case 1 it is a fairly erect position. The second <coughs> case the stool on which those books are is a little shorter okay, and the person has to bend to do whatever task um, he is doing. And in the third case it is not only you know it is it is located in such a way that they have to reach forward even more. So, there is even more bending of the trunk that is happening in this third case and so we will look at um, the loads on the spine in this case. Last time we took a free body diagram of the lower half of the body and we solved it. So, now let us look at how we would do it if we took the free body diagram of the upper part of the body. So, you have so these are the three cases we will look at. So, let us look at let us say the person this is an exaggerated bend of course, but let us say theta is the angle this part I am drawing the free body diagram of the thoraco lumbar spine. So, the base is still that same joint the lumbosacral joint. So, A denotes the location of the lumbosacral joint so, joint between the fifth lumbar vertebrae vertebra and the sacrum and then let us say that whatever when the person is all the the load of the head and arms acts at the base of the cervical spine ok. So, at the top of the thoraco lumbar spine. So, let us say that this is equal to weight of um, let me call it head, neck, arms acting through the end point of that <coughs> spine ok. So, that is the weight of the head, neck and arms. This is the weight of the trunk itself ok, the portion that we are considering the thoraco lumbar spine with all its. Um, so, this is the weight of the trunk that we are considering. and it is acting let us say through the center of the thoraco lumbar spine and the muscle that is acting. So, let us say the what, what kind of muscles are these these are the what muscles are these the erector spinae or essentially these are extensor muscles for the trunk. So, these are so F m is could be the erector spinae and perhaps some additional muscles extensor muscles we are clubbing them all into one extensor muscles of the trunk. And at the joint you have a J axial and a J shear ok. The J axial is what causes compression 
of the spine, perhaps compression of the discs, compression of and could also cause fracture of the discs and the J shear is what could cause they, them to displace or um, um, slip right that is your uh, shear loading. So, this is the axial load <coughs> and the shear load that acts at the joint the lumbosacral joint. Okay. Is there anything suppose, suppose the person is carrying a load then this would you would also add that to this you know if you had in this case let us say they are not really carrying a load, but W L equal to 0. But you can basically do the same analysis by adding that load to the arms. Okay. So, now we are looking at and let me give you some values. So, let us say this weight of head neck and arms equal to 0.18 times. So, from anthropometric data I say that that is equal to 0.18 w <coughs> weight of the trunk I take it as 0.36 w and distance a b equal to 0.15 times the height a c equal to 0.2 times the height A D equal to 0.3 H and let us say that the muscle the line of action of the muscle makes an angle of 13 degrees with alpha is 13 degrees with the thoracolumbar spine. So, now we will perform the analysis for the three different positions that we saw here. So, let us say case 1 is theta equal to 85 degrees the spine is nearly erect case 2 is theta equal to 75 degrees and case 3 is theta equal to 60 degrees. Let us look at what they f m okay. and I have j a and J s. Now, I can do my three equations sigma m a equal to 0, sigma f x. So, if I take this as x y, I could also take or in this case it may be more meaningful to take my x y like that okay, along the spine and perpendicular. So, sigma f x equal to 0 and sigma f y equal to 0. So, go ahead and compute in terms of theta. So, I will get if I do sigma m a equal to 0 I get minus 0 0.36 w minus of. So, if I take counterclockwise positive minus point cos theta f m sin alpha into 0.2 h equal to 0. So, I get f m equal to 0.108 w h cos theta by 0.2 h sin alpha. Okay, if I include a for non zero w l, I would get this expression as f m equal to 0.108 w and you can verify this. here also the h and h will cancel. So, 
So, now if I take sigma f x equal to 0, then I get j a equal to f m cos alpha plus 0.36 w sin theta plus sin theta and I get j s cos theta cos theta. Okay. So, now I can plot So, theta equal to 85, theta equal to 75 degrees and theta equal to 60 degrees. So, tell me what F m, J a and J s are. Go ahead and work it out. F m? Point two one w. Point 209 W 209 ok and for theta equal to 75 0.62 W and 1.2 W for theta equal to 60. What about J A? 0.74 theta equal to 75 1.13 1.13 and for theta equal to 60 1.2 6 4 and the shear force in most cases is almost 0. Okay. It is pretty close to 0 for all 3 cases. So, you see here with no external load at all just the change in posture can make a significant difference in the loads on the spine. For instance, this tablet that I am using, okay, if it was not at the right height and I have to bend down to write over the course of the lecture, I am imposing more loading on my spine than if it were located at the right. Um, configuration. Okay. So, this is the importance of um, you know designing workspaces so that you are not putting excessive loads on the spine. So, there is a whole branch of uh, um, biomechanics that looks at the design of workspaces and all that and that is called uh, and so this area is called ergonomics. or also called human factors in design, ergonomics or human factors. That is the term that is given to ensuring that um, works erg <coughs> goes you know is for work, workspaces etcetera are designed properly. So, as not to impose um, excessive loads on the body. Okay. Because when, you, when a person is doing the same thing for hours on end, the cumulative effect of the damage can be quite high. So, you will notice that some people who have to work, they will develop back pain sooner or later, you know, and they will not be able to function. So, the posture, say, same way when you are sitting, 
if you sit with incorrect posture ok, sooner or later you are going to develop back problems ok. So, it is important that because the muscle muscle the extensive muscles have to to keep your body in that position against the force of gravity because a large part of your body mass is concentrated uh, in the top portion of your body. So, to keep it from falling down the extensor muscles have to exert high forces which in turn lead to high joint reactions ok. So, that is the importance of correct posture. Similarly, when you are lifting a load ok we saw. Uh, so, case 1 is you bend your trunk and then lift the load. So, the, you can analyze this similar to what we did just now except that in addition to you also have the W L that is the case where you have this plus the load ok and you have theta I will just uh, I will let you do the analysis, but I will tell you um, 3 cases for which you can analyze this. Uh, so, you have theta equal to 35 degrees ok, theta equal to 35 degrees. Then you have if you if you bend down keep the load closer to your body and lift with your legs then your spine stays more erect ok. I can either bend down and pick up a load like that or I can go down you know bend my legs go down pick up the load. So, that my back is straighter than what it was earlier and that would be the case the second case where theta equal to 75 and then the third the uh, optimal way of doing this load lifting is if the load itself was say divided equally I bend I keep my back straight and I lift it with handles. So, I do not have to do any bending at all to lift a load from the front. So, if the load is provided with handles ok and, and divided equally so that I can use my two hands to lift it then that is the most optimal way of doing this load lifting. Of course, it is not always possible because loads are tend to be bulky sometimes it is not always easy to divide a load and provide it with handles, but if possible that should be the way to go. Otherwise you should always sit you know you bend your legs hold the load close to the body and then lift it or get help you know more than one person to help lift the load because you can do a lot of damage yes to your spine. How is lifting with legs more erect posture because there is flexion at the hip right? There is flexion at the hip. So, the theta is actually increasing. You, if you look here ok, if you look at the loads at the base of the spine the thoracolumbar spine how much it has uh, what is the inclination of that ok. If the you are looking at theta with respect to the horizontal here. If you look here this theta is measured with respect to the horizontal it is not the relative angle between the thigh and the uh, trunk ok. So, theta is measured the absolute angle with respect to the horizontal is what we are talking about when we are talking about an erect spine ok. So, you would do the analysis in the same way. So, this is say theta equal to 90 degrees or 80 yeah this would be from the point A yeah these because the C G you know it is you are giving the distance in terms of the length of that spine. So, these locations will not change 
but the contributions to the moments and all that will change with theta ok. The yeah, the points B and D will not change, will not change with respect to the thoracolumbar spine. On the spine A, B and D with respect to the global system it is going to be different because the theta plays a part in that. Yes? Uh, in the earlier question you said that J S shear joint forces are like negligible, hmm. it is coming out to be significant. What did you get? Uh, for the 85 degrees I got 0.5 watt W. Hmm. I got point triple zero one eight. Yeah, it's less. Yeah, it's ten to the power minus, minus four. four. Yeah, the order is different. Yeah, it's of the order of ten to the power minus four or minus five, something like that. Uh, there must be some mistake in your calculations. You can check in the last that. Case, what is alpha? In the last case, also we are assuming. So we are assuming alpha is always acting at thirteen degrees with respect to the thoracolumbar spine that is here from the back because your spine has a curve right. So, we are assuming that the line of action is at 13 degrees. So, by drawing the model we <coughs> only have a straight line right with the loads acting vertically. Yeah. So, you will have yeah. Then the muscle force. Muscle will force will be at an angle to that vertical. That Although joint force will so the joint force will balance that out no so there will be there will be a yeah there will then be a horizontal joint force in order to balance out that uh, so that in that case you will probably have and there is a moment also so that will also be applied with the joint no we are assuming it is a pin joint so it cannot support a moment so the forces have to be such that those all three equations have to be satisfied if, if it is an equilibrium you cannot have a residual moment for 90 degrees yeah. ok then uh, then we will have to see what uh, let me work that out and I will uh, everything will be this thing no ok ok I see. The, then you can just take alpha equal to 0, yeah. then you know that is it is going to act because it is almost along the spine <coughs> ok. So, here I think I computed oh I took 85 degrees that is why ok that is why I did not run into that. Um, so, if you take nearly erect so, I computed these for and you can work that out and check. I took W L as 20 percent of the body weight and for the three cases theta equal to 35, theta equal to 75 and theta equal to 85 degrees. I got F m as 1.885 w let us call it just 1.8.97 w and 0.32 w. So, you can see the drastic change in the muscle force. J A 3.4 W 1.7 W and 1.1 or 1.05 W and the shear 0 0.08 W 0 0.024 W and 0 0.008 w that is why people if they have problems with their spine they are advised not to lift loads 
you have to because the uh, effect of those loads can be quite detrimental to the health of the spine okay or if they experience pain so you know all this leads to worsening of the condition so if so these you can work out it's the same free body diagram just as a different set of uh, you have some external loads now let's look at um, let's look at the case say the person is okay um, okay so now once you have the once you've lifted the load we'll we'll look at the analysis using a back pack next before that when a person is carrying the load say they are carrying a load let's look at a case now where wl equal to 0.2 w okay and person is carrying equally distributed into a 0.1 w load in each hand use the free body diagram to analytically determine theta at which f m equal to 0. Okay. At what angle of the spine does your muscle not have to exert any force at all. So, you have the expression for f m which we saw earlier as 0.36 w a b cos theta plus 0.18 w plus w l a d cos theta divided by a c sin alpha. So, when will your f m be 0? theta equal to cos theta is 0. If cos theta is 0, then so when you are erect, then your f m is likely to be 0, but of course, you have to make you know in that case if alpha is 0, then you have a indeterminate <coughs> system. So, if we assume alpha acts at an angle to the spine then your solution is so close to 90 degrees is what you are looking at to minimize the muscle force. Analytically it tells you that if alpha acts at a finite angle to the spine then your when the spine is erect at theta equal to 90 your f m will be 0 and in this case r axial <coughs> comes out to be 0.74 w sorry j axial and the shear force will be 0 all the loads are f m is 0. So, that is what happens when theta equal to 90. Now, let us look at the case where you are carrying a backpack that is something we all do on a regular <coughs> basis. So, let us try to using the same free body diagram a similar free body diagram let us analyze what it is going to look like when you are carrying a load in a backpack. Okay. 
So, for this let us see what is the angle theta at which f m equal to 0. So, let me call this as j axial j shear this is my w l ok this is the weight of the trunk this is weight of head plus arms. So, this is equal to 0 0.18 w 0.36 and let me call the distance from this load to this joint as x ok that is how far <coughs> behind the load this w l you know how far behind it acts from that joint lumbosacral joint is my x ok and I want to determine at what angle f m will be 0 when I am carrying this load in a backpack. <coughs> so, my E so if this is A, what is this distance? X equal to point one two H minus point one five H cos theta. I am given a b equal to no what is uh, point one two h uh, a b e b e b where is uh, yeah e b ok e b is <coughs> one two h So, find out the angle at which this is f m again take you can take alpha equal to thirteen degrees and find at what angle theta <coughs> you will have W L is again point two W. Although kids when they go to school nowadays their backpacks are close to their body weight. So, point two W is very uh, low. So, what do you get? At what angle is f m equal to 0? If f m equal to 0, then I have 0 0.18 w 
if I take moments about A. WL into if you solve this you get theta equal to 80 degrees. <coughs> okay, so, when you are carrying a backpack not the fully erect, but somewhat bent your muscle force will be 0 and what is uh, the axial load at this at theta equal to 80 you get 0.74 w and you get the shear force of 0.13 w So, if I just look at x, you know I want to look at what can I play with x, okay, what should be there, where should the load be in the backpack, how do I pack my backpack, okay. I can look at to do that I can say so for f m equal to 0, <coughs> let me say w l into x equal to 0 0.36 w into a b cos theta plus 0 0.18 w into a d cos theta. So, I can if I look at x by cos theta it is equal to 0.36 w into a b plus 0.18 w into a d by w l. That is equal to this is some constant the numerator is a constant because it is all based on the. So, this is some constant by w l. So, if I want f m to be equal to 0 okay, and I increase the load in the backpack, what do I have to do? What happens to theta? If I increase the load in the backpack, okay, initially for w l equal to 0 0.2 times w, I found theta equal to 80. Now, if I increase the load, which way should theta go? Should I become more erect or do I bend more? I tend to bend more, my theta decreases. So, that cos theta will increase. Okay. So, if W L increases, then so when you when the load on your backpack increases, you tend to <coughs> bend more. Okay, so, a simple analysis like this can tell you why that happens. Then if you look at x, okay, the other way that I could minimize the impact of the bent load is if I maintain theta, then I should decrease x. Right? If if I want to keep the same posture, then I have to decrease x. So, how can I do that? So, if I look at my backpack, okay, so right, you tend to pack the heavier stuff. You know, if you lay the backpack flat, you put the heavier stuff, like even your laptop pouch, right? It is they, they do not put it in the front they put it towards the back. So, that that is your and then you start putting lighter stuff on top of it. 
so that you are moving your C G, so that you are making x smaller. So, you pack it such that x is as close to the joint as possible. Okay. So, a simple model like this of the spine can give you um, insight into why we do that. Okay. So, we will, um, so you put the lightest things on top. So, if you, you and you put the heaviest ones towards the, when you, when you are packing it, you put the heaviest ones there. Okay. So, that is the right way to pack a backpack. So, that you do not have to stoop so much to carry the load. Okay? Because when we are walking, you want to walk fairly erect, you do not want to walk like that. So, that is uh, a simple analysis tells you uh, why we do that. Okay? The next class, we will move on to the lower <coughs> body. We will look at uh, what are some of the loads that happen when you do static analysis of the lower lips. <coughs>